Hi everyone. I would waited to get doc, Dr. O to get done so I could do my periscope and I found a video from uh, Round Saturn's Eye, I think is who it is. And he had a video. He's got several videos on Donald Trump and I thought this one was quite interesting. And I figured if I start talking about Donald Trump, I'll get a lot more viewers than normal. So without further ado, I'll turn the camera around so we can watch the video. Hi, Dolores. Good to see you. And uh, it's a 25-minute video, but uh, you'll really enjoy it. I watched the whole thing, and, and it's quite interesting. So without further ado, I'll turn the camera around. We'll get it started here. Welcome to Periscope. You can share this too if you want to because it's be quite interesting. I know what you mean. But notice the uh, stand here. Only time will tell. Like these two are almost like at attention militarily. And he's kind of at the parade rest or whatever. Although that was interesting. But notice also the uh, circle of light there above his head. Like he's the saint. And here's the two little servants of the Vatican. Hey, Dr. O. And it would seem that the New World Order would hate Trump to be the next president of America. But he said a few things at this event, which makes me think um, that he's just one of them. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias, to defend religious liberty, and to create a culture that celebrates life. And then he goes on to say this. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. So he's talking about the one world government there. Yep. And we've, right. got, to come, and we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. And he says the religious leaders here have to be example for everybody else. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. There, he's making the 666 okay, sign. I don't think they're probably that good of an example in the scriptures that we Jews and Christians and Muslims cherish. Yep, you're right. And we've got to come together, not only as a nation, but as a world community. This cross, this thing, there's a crown above it. I, we couldn't make out what these different metals are there on his shoulder. But let me just show you what this thing is. 
This is the Order of the British Empire, OBE, for God and the Empire. Hmm. You say, what's significant about that? Well, this order, if you do the research into it, you can look into it more, but it's a, it's a British Commonwealth order. In other words, right. it's people that are subservient to the throne of England, the throne of England being subservient to the Vatican. It is a basically a Shriner level. Of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. His message about rejecting a mindset of hostility. His calls to reduce inequality. His warnings about climate change. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Well, then I guess I'm going to be in trouble, huh? Because I'm anti-Catholic. Because I'm against Roman Catholicism. Oh, but he's the lesser of two evils, right? Oh, you know, Hillary's such a wicked, you know, liberal and thinks, and she is. But he'll be so much better. They're both servants of the Vatican. Get through your thick skulls, people. And I understand why, because the country is in a state. Our country is not great either. The world is changing very fast. And so along comes someone and says, let's make our country great again. I can understand why people would buy that so easily. It plays on a, a place in people that is getting desperate. But that is the ploy to feed into that desperation that is building within people. And that's exactly the kind of manipulation that it always does. Just look back at history. History repeats itself. This is the same game with different players. Don't fall for it. Oh, really? Huh. I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Because they're not Jews, they are Catholic. It's got to come together as he puts up 666. Not only as a nation, but as a world community. Come together not only as a nation, but as a world community. He just called for the New World Order people. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example. See, he's making the 666 song. Natural end. Help us to reach out to the marginalized in our society. 
So he nudges Trump, and Trump starts nodding. Life is your greatest gift to us. Teach us to respect life from its natural beginning to its natural end. Help us. To and then Trump opens his eyes because he's wondering what's happened. To reach out to the marginalized in our society. So the only way to make America great again is not primarily with the ballot box. It is for people to get on their knees and pray that God would intervene in this situation, in the way things are unfolding, because these nations once respected God, but now they're striving after what's wrong, what's evil, what's sinful. And no man, including Donald oh, that Trump, is going to single-handedly save or redeem a nation uh, that is turning away from God. Don't make this political. I'm really surprised that 30% of truthers on the main channel... Oh, I watch Alex Jones sometimes, too. He is a little to funny, but... This is to do with the spiritual war. This is to do with the Bible. This is to do with prophecy. And um, we need to pray. That's all we can do. Don't Please don't ask my advice on who or whether you should vote, because that's between you and God. It's, it's your own choice to make, but... I'm just trying to warn people that this agenda goes far deeper than it looks. Don't just jump on someone charismatic who comes onto the scene and says everything that our rich ears want to hear. Because <clears throat> this is how the trick works. They play society. They play on people's emotions and it's dangerous. Right. If you're falling for this Vatican psyop type of a thing, welcome to Paris. So much better than she's going to be. He's the first man I've ever heard running for president that said we need to stop anti-Catholic bias. We need to fight against that. I never heard anybody else say that. But you're not convinced, are you? You just got that little red. Oh, well, you're legs. probably right on that one. I I agree there. Yeah. If Hillary would get in, you know, I just I just can't think. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. You need to get right with God, people. Persecution is almost at our doorstep now. We're having some fun here tonight, and that's good. On a personal note, yeah, I what heard an about amazing that. honor it is to be with all of you. And I want to congratulate Hillary on getting the nomination, and we're there fighting. And over the next 19 days, uh, somebody's going to be chosen. We'll see what happens. But I have great memories of coming to this dinner with my father. Over the years, when I was a young man, great experience for me. This was always a special experience for him and me to be together. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti-Catholic bias. Yo vi Pablo como fratello. Gracias, Signore, porque yo les cayó. I mean, we could have another eight years of Hillary Clinton and the worst mess that anybody could make out of a nation. You're going to be held seriously, seriously to account by God if you don't vote. <laughs> and you're going to find that out before this broadcast is over. You're going to be guilty of murder. You're going to be guilty of an abomination of God. You're going to be guilty for every baby that's aborted from this election forward. And you certainly don't need to be Catholic to be inspired by the humility and heart of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, or to embrace his message. That's right. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Amen. Stand up exactly. to anti Catholic bias, to defend religious liberty. America is in many ways divided like it's never been before. And the great religious leaders here tonight give us all an example that we can follow. We're living in a time and age that we never thought possible before. And we've got yep. to come together. You're right. Not only as a nation, but as a world.
community. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? He's Maybe right. Now we're all Catholics again. You're going to be held seriously to account by oh. coming here. We can also agree on the need to stand up to anti Catholic bias. Till we all come. In the unity of the faith. Oh, abomination of God. Amen. Oh, How can there be a Protestant church? You're going to be guilty of murder. Of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. No, he's in Alabama. I'm, I'm a Southern dad, like he is, but I, he, he's in Alabama and I'm in Oregon. We're in the same denomination. You're welcome. The protest is over. You're welcome. No, I didn't see that. Thank you for inviting followers. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? Uh, no, you know, I don't watch the news. I'll have to... Um, see if I can find it on the on um, the newspaper. I'm a right Thank you so much. Christian type was how I've always been brought up, and I've always voted towards the right wing, um, the party that would be more likely to support Christianity in the right wing. Sadly, there isn't really any of that left in politics, whether it be the UK or the US. There's no real Christianity. That's like saying that Fox is a Christian news network while it airs Lucifer on the other hand. So just because this is the pre-work run to the elections, it doesn't mean to say that we're still not in the season of the end times, that the US and, well, most of the world is turning their back on God doesn't change any of that. Don't get caught in the hype. This ties into the making the male that crazy face. and oh. the uh, female candidate more composed. So again, that demonizing of the male, the age of the woman, all of that. It also ties into the demonizing of the Christian. That, that a lot of Christians, because he's standing as right wing, are getting drawn into that. But then at the same time, uh, being branded yeah, he as sure racist, did, didn't he? being branded as homophobic, being branded as extremist and we've got the whole oncoming what seems to be provocation of chaos knock the crap out of him would you seriously just knock the hell i promise you i will pay for the legal fees i promise in the good old days this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very very rough and when they protested once you know they would not do it again so easily I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. This man is not free from the agenda. From what I've seen, there's no way he really can't be when billionaire rubbing shoulders with the elite and getting to this position in order to be shown across the world and run for president. You don't don't get to that position without being involved yep, in you're some right. way, shape or form. I'm sorry to say, it's just the truth. So once again, saying things that are intentionally not politically correct to stir up the, the bucket. Well, whilst we've got all these massive influx of immigration that they've allowed, all of the, you know, allowing all that to happen at the same time, stirring mm -hmm. up a 
sense of patriotism, but with a false candidate who um, who draws the right wing into that and stirs them up, just like they're doing with Alex Jones. Agents of chaos, that's what we'd call them. And people say, well, why would the press be going against them? Hegelian dialectic, scapegoatism. The reason the, the press would be going against them is because with every hateful statement... Oh, that that's what this is. Left, I've never... I've never seen him before until just recently. Every time He's the press good. laughs at Donald Trump, to put it simply, that is actually a converted form of them laughing at the right-wing Christians. That, do you see the way it yeah, works? They are. They're tarring Christians with that racist branding, claiming that they are linked to Christianity, and but then at the same time, you know, denying the fundamental principles of Christianity. For example... Donald Trump was asked if he would ever seek forgiveness, and he pretty much, in so many words, said no. But it is making the left wing probably look a bit more composed, Hillary Clinton, and making the right wing look maniacal, crazy. Even, you know, just the whole comedy act is all a comedy he act. He does look like a clown. Which I believe that this is controlled opposition um, in order to make the right wing look mentally insane. That is what they are doing over and over again. With every every time we keep seeing this over and over, that the right wing is being portrayed because it links to Christian fundamentalism and evangelical Christianity. They're making the right wing look weak. They're making the right wing look uh, unstable um, and laughable. We're in the end times now. We haven't seen the worst of it yet, though. Please do. No, you sure won't.
shall set up our own to oh, all I'm, I'm glad you have. Our thank you for coming in. At heart, aka the Christians, will accept this simulated opposition as their own and will show us their cards. Now, how how blatant are we seeing that, that Christians are being goaded and baited into this seeming opposition? Skipping down. Now, this is what I was saying about the uh, emotions that are being used and the hypersensitivity. Look at this. When a pulse quickens, I don't know. I don't know. I've only seen Alex Jones, uh, Jones a few times. I think he's kind of weird. When a but... pulse quickens, emotional impulse quickening. For an excited patient loses all power of judgment and easily yields to suggestion. Ah. The, those fools who will think they are repeating the opinion of a newspaper of their own camp will be repeating our opinion or any opinion that seems desirable for us. In the vain belief that they are following the organ of their party, they will in yep. fact follow the flag which we hang out for them. Be careful, guys. Don't fall for the traps. Please, God bless. That was a really good video because we know as Seventh Day Adventists that it wouldn't it wouldn't have mattered if Hillary had got it. Now that Trump's got it, things are going are not going to change. And if he keeps this word, he'll be the first president that ever does. Because you know they like to say, "Well, I'll do such and such and such." And and when you get right down to it, they really don't do it. They say this stuff to get elected. But I'm hoping that he does everything he says he's going to do because I. Some of the stuff that he said he wants to do, I'm all for it. Now, if he just keeps his word. Well, I'm one of these kinds, though, that, like Obama, I was willing to give him a chance when I voted for him in 2008. And I'm willing to give Donald Trump a chance, too, because we don't know how he's going to be as president. He's never had political office, so only time will tell. He might do better than we think. He can't be any worse than Obama, I know that. <laughs> That's for sure. He can't be much worse than him because... Obama started out okay, but then he, as the time went on, it seems he got worse and worse and worse. So I hope Donald Trump proves himself, because then, then I will say, well, then America did right by voting for him, even though I didn't vote, you know, because I knew it wouldn't make a difference anyway. As, you know, we as Adventists, we know that the time is coming, the end is coming, and there's nothing we can do to stop it, and there's nothing he can do to stop it, you know. But if we get the United Church and State, we know what's going to happen. You're going to have the National Sunday Law. And for anybody in here that doesn't know what the National Sunday Law is, that's enforced Sunday worship, where you're going to be required to worship on Sunday or you can't buy or sell. And uh, the ones that don't uh, buy or s uh, that don't uh, take the mark, we can't buy or sell. Because when you, when you go to worship on Sunday and you, you, know, you want to buy or sell, you take the mark of the beast which is in your hand <clears throat> or in your forehead, and then you're automatically lost. So I don't want anybody in here taking the mark of the beast or, or say you didn't, didn't hear about the mark of the beast because that's what I'm here for, to tell you the mark of the beast is not something you want you want to do because that's that's bad. But yet a lot of people are good. Well, hello there. Welcome to Periscope. You know, there's a lot of people take the mark of the beast unknowingly because they were never told. Of course, others are going to take it because they don't want to starve. But we know our bread and water will be sure. We just have to put our faith and trust in the Lord. And when, you know, you saw the Pope on there, he's the Antichrist for anybody that may not know who he is. He's got the number 666 on his mitre. And it won't be too long before he's going to prove himself. I'll tell you right now. I mean, everybody's already wandering after him. You know, the world's supposed to wander after the beast. Well, they're already wandering after him. They seem to follow him everywhere he goes. He kisses babies and you know, kisses the ground and stuff like that and and kisses people's foreheads. Well, he wouldn't touch touch me. I'd be, ooh. But anyway, you know, that everybody's already wandering after the beast. So it's not going to be so hard when the National Sunday Law comes around for those that keep Sunday because they're going to, they, they automatically keep Sunday now. And they'll say, oh, you know, what's the difference? I already go to church on Sunday. It's not going to matter to me. But, it, yeah, it when, that's true. When we... um when we've uh um we know as seven day adventists that 
that not worshiping on Sunday is not going to be hard for us because we never have been worshiping on Sunday. We've been worshiping on the Sabbath. Welcome to Periscope. And we and uh, so we have to stand true because we don't want to be caught where the wicked are going because we know that when they're lost, they're going to have to suffer the seven last plagues. And that is dire consequences. Those are real dire consequences for everybody. And they're going to have to suffer those after Jesus comes. And I know people in here like think like to think that there's a, a such a thing as a secret rapture, but that's not even biblical. Good, you're right. Seventh day is the Saturday is the Sabbath, um, but don't go to church on Sunday because I don't want you to be caught. If you're going to church on Sunday when that National Sunday Law comes, you'll be lost. So you don't want to do that. You know, go to church. You know, you can either go to a Sabbath keeping church or. You could worship online or whatever, but don't go to Sunday keeping church. I know I've not. I've been a Seventh-day Adventist over 40 years, and I don't intend to change that and go just to have anything to eat or, or whatever. Um, well, that's okay, but you really shouldn't go on Sunday because God never instituted Sunday as the, as the Sabbath. He also instituted the seventh day, not Sunday. I know a lot of people say that... <clears throat> God made seven, made Sunday because of the resurrection. But it's the Catholics that changed the day from Sabbath to Sunday. It's on their authority the day was changed. And they, they don't even admit it. But there's nothing in the Bible to say, well, you go to church because of the resurrection. That's not right. Because the only thing, the only thing that God wrote with his own finger that's in the Bible are the Ten Commandments. And the Fourth Commandment is the only one that says, remember. That's the, uh, that's the one that's got the most words in it, too. It's got 93 words. And he said, remember, because he knew people would forget. And it hasn't been, and it hasn't been done away with because it's set in stone. It could never be done away with. It can't be abolished. He said he'd never come to abolish the law, but to fulfill. Well, that's okay. I'm, I'm glad you are saved. Um, it was, you know, it was 321 A.D. when he instituted the. You're close. It was 321 A.D. when he instituted the uh, um, Sunday, but um, we know that he didn't have the authority to do that. They, you know, they they did that on their own. You know, and like I said, the whole world's been following after them and wandering. You know, following the Catholics, and you know, actually, in essence, when you think about it. They're supposed to be protesting, but protesting what? You're supposed to be protesting against the Catholic Church, but as long as you follow them and go to church on Sunday, you're no better than they are. You're not pro protesting a thing. And Adventists right now are, are the only true Protestants because we're pro protesting everything against the Catholics, their false doctrine and, and Sunday worship and everything that they have to offer. We, we, don't, go, we don't go along with any of it. So I hope that, that those in here that go to church on Sunday will will come out of those Sunday keeping churches because God said, come out of her, my people, that you take none of her sins and receive none of her plagues. Because that we know that's going to be an awful time. Um, he doesn't, he, God instituted Sabbath, the seventh day, Saturday, as the Sabbath. He did not institute Sunday. And yet the whole world goes to church on Sunday because of the resurrection. Um, the seventh day Sabbath, and that's in the fourth commandment where, G, where God says the seven, you know, keep the seventh day holy. And you look on your calendar, Saturday is the seventh day. And the Jews have never lost time. Lost time. They have the Sabbath, they've been keeping the Sabbath since the beginning. And Sabbath has been with us since creation. And it, we've never, it's been, never been lost. And uh, I don't care for the Jewish practices after Sabbath, but they've never lost Sabbath. And, uh, well, I don't care for Trump either, but you know, there isn't anything we can do about it. You know, he was he was selected, and which kind of surprised me because I thought Hillary was going to get it. But anyway, he was selected, and all we can do is hope and pray that he does everything he says he's going to do because they, they usually don't, but maybe he'll be a man of his word this time. We can only hope and pray. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Like I said, he can't do any worse than Obama, and I'll certainly be glad to see that man get out of office. You know, And a lot of people have said, well... They're going to move to Canada if, if uh, Trump becomes president. Well, I don't think <laughs> I would want to go to Canada anyway. Their laws there are really bad. But yes, that's right, electoral college, which isn't fair because years ago it used to be the popular vote, which is what it should be. It should not be um, the electoral college. I don't agree with that. But, you know, there's nothing we could do about that. That's what they have, so we have to abide by it. But we have a new a new president-elect now, and we all have to... You know, 
hope and pray that he does what he says he's going to do. But, you know, I don't follow him as a, as a human. I'm following Jesus. So, you know, I'm just hoping and praying that uh, he stays true to his word. And uh, I'm not going to get caught. I didn't get caught up in all this political stuff because I didn't, you know, to me, the election didn't matter because I knew that whoever gets it, it would end up being prophecy would get fulfilled anyway. And I didn't think it was, it, it, you know, we didn't have any good candidates because uh, this is the only election I can recall where you didn't have either candidate wasn't fit to, to be in the White House. And actually, when you think about it, Trump is the lesser of two evils. I certainly didn't want her in there with what she's doing, but I didn't want him in there either. But what choice do we have? So, yes, I was. I was in Dr. Oscope. I go in his scopes all the time. I'm one of his regular viewers. But, um, you know, like I said, he's the lesser of two evils, and, and I just hope that, that uh, he does everything he says he's going to do. Like I said, we can only give him, give him a chance to prove himself. But I'm still going to stay true to God, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to what anybody says. And like I said, I didn't caught, get caught up in this political stuff, you know, with the election and stuff. I didn't vote because I didn't feel, it, you know, it made a difference anyway, since prophecy will be, will be fulfilled. And it may come faster with Donald Trump than it would have her. I don't know. But I know with the, with the mark of the beast coming, I wasn't, I wasn't too concerned who got in, who got into office, you know, because Jesus is the one I'm following, not Trump or Hillary or anything like that. And you know, the thing of it is, the election took a lot of people's minds off of what really mattered. I didn't hear Jesus being talked about or anything because they're always concerned about uh, uh, Donald Trump or, or Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, I don't. You know, I don't know. He wants to repeal Obamacare, and to me, that is one thing I hope he does for the simple fact that Obamacare has hurt a lot of people. I'm not on Obamacare because I've got Medicare, but. I hope and pray that, that he can get rid of it because uh, he's promised so many things. And like I said, if he did it only to get elected, then that's a sad state of affairs. But, you know, and he does have a he does have a bad potty mouth. And I just hope that that mouth, he doesn't take it into the White House because he wouldn't be fit to be in there if he did. I, I don't understand why he had to, you know, and he's no respecter of women, but Maybe he'll he'll respect women now more since he's been elected president. Who knows? So we can only wait and see. So, yeah, I know. I never. I heard it last night. And he never mentioned God either. There, you saw on the on the video on the video he did have his Bible. So I guess he does read the Bible, and I guess he's only been a Christian a short period of time, from what I understand. So yes, you you're right. Politics are corrupt, and you know. They don't matter like Jesus matters, you know, and the thing of it is, everybody thought about the election, and we're talking about Trump and Hillary, but Jesus was never thought of. He was like he was tossed into the corner, and that's not right. Yeah, baby Christian, you're right. So I don't think he, he really has read his Bible that much and really knows what's going to happen, you know. Yes, he is. He's with the Illuminati. Yep, he's with the Illuminati. It's sad to say, but, you know. There isn't much we can do. I think Hillary was with, is with the Illuminati too. So, like I said, we, we had no choice in the matter. So, <laughs> so I'm just hoping and praying that he proves us all wrong, you know. And and uh, yeah, election is evil. You're right, because they're actually not elected. They're selected anyway, because with the electoral college, it was it was uh, before the election even came on. It was already uh, selected who was going to become president. We, you know. And everybody still puts their cast their vote anyway. It doesn't really count, not when you got the electoral college. And my state is a is a democratic state anyway, and it automatically went to Hillary. So you know, I wasn't. It wasn't worth it to me. You know, years ago, like I said, they had the popular vote. They didn't have the electoral college at the time that Nixon and Kennedy were running, because our family had voted for Nixon, and we were disappointed when Kennedy got got elected. But you know, he turned out to be pretty good. I really, I really liked him. But, you know, that was the only time that, you know, he went won it like by a landslide. But you just don't have that anymore. I wish they'd do away with that electoral college. I think that's, that's it's all rigged, it's crooked and everything else, you know. What really surprises me is they finally kept, they didn't, are not going to have to recount the votes in Florida. Because it seems like uh, they always have to recount those things in Florida. So, you know, and I knew once he took Florida and Ohio, he automatically had it. So I, I waited I stayed up last night until I saw that he took took Florida, and I thought, well, he's got the presidency because it always stands that way. So Obama took it in 2008, 2012. Now Trump did. You know, but 
I told my ex-husband this morning, when you, when you think about it, the election is always either, you know, starts Republican, then Democrat, then Republican, then, then, then Democrat, although 2008, 2012, we had Obama get it both times. But normally, I figured, well, it was time for a Republican to be in there again. Yeah, I, I watched the, the only thing I watched was the concession speeches. I thought that Hillary did a very good job, too, but she was you know, almost in tears. You could tell it. She was very hurt. And she said it's going to take a while for her to get over this. As I think she so hoped to become president, you know. And I don't know how good she would have been either, you know. Like I said, he's a lesser of two evils. So we can only hope for the best and say, hi, good to see you. And hope that everything goes right. Oh, you're so welcome. Yes, we are. We are at the end of times for sure. And that's why I come in here. I'm just great. And how are you? That's why I come in here and tell people about the mark of the beast and stuff because, um, the, the, you know, it's people, there are so many people that don't know about the mark of the beast, the end times, because their pastors uh, preach a watered down gospel and they don't, they don't tell them what they need to hear. They don't get into the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you, you like it. Yeah, we do. We, were, we live in a world of evil, you know. And that's what I'm saying. This this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And that's why, I, you know, I'm not anxious for the tribulation or anything like that. But I know once it comes, we haven't got very long and Jesus, and Jesus will be coming. And then we can leave this old world and go to our home in heaven where we, where we belong. Because like I said, this is not our home. We're just passing through. And I'll be glad to leave it, you know. And... If you're like me, you might be a little bit scared about what's to come, but we all have to stay true anyway, and, and uh, we're going to have to flee for our lives, and and uh, we're going to be persecuted, we're going to be martyred, and we may even lose our Bibles, and we're going to be jailed too, but we it's only a moment in time anyway. So, you know, that's right, you know, until, yeah, that's right, because uh, Jesus is... Uh, going to come we we don't know when he's going to come it's gonna it's going to happen but it's going to come after the persecution it's going to come after the tribulation you know um and right now we're going through the investigative judgment and that is to see who's fit for heaven and uh, you know if he doesn't have an investigative judgment first he doesn't know who's fit we won't know who's fit for heaven you know and he's up there interceding for us right now and so we have to be always on guard you know and and uh Satan is doing everything he can to try to take us down, and we don't want that to happen. Um, and I, I, I got a little um, hurt this morning, a little devastated. Um, I, might, I mentioned on Dr. Rose, I don't know if anybody who's in here saw it, but uh, I have two grandsons, the older grandsons, that were always following me on Facebook. And um, I knew the younger one, the middle one wasn't following me anymore because he didn't like that I was posting religious stuff on Facebook. Well, that didn't really bother me too much, but his brother, his older brother, 21 years old, was. Well, this morning, um, he went on a tangent. I saw his post on Facebook. She told me on the phone what they had talked about. He had messaged her. But he posted a, a big thing on Facebook that if anybody in his family voted for Trump or any of his friends voted for Trump, he's going to unfollow them and they're not part of his life anymore. Well, that hurt me so bad. I commented back to him and I says, this is not the Andrew I know. I says, you were never like that. I says, this is not the Andrew I know and love. And it was so sad for him just because of Trump, because he thought he's like another Hitler. And, you know, and I... I told my daughter, I says, he had no cause to talk like he did. And, and she said she was going to tell him. He's, she told him the way I felt. And he says, well, you tell Grandma that I didn't want to upset her, but don't tell her I'm an atheist. Well, she told me anyway, and that really made me upset. I just bawled all morning long because I prayed and prayed and prayed for him. Because what's so sad is him and his brother were in Pathfinders at one time, and they dearly loved Pathfinders. And for them to turn and go the way they have... It's really upsetting. It, it's yes, I have to stay strong because uh, I I have to think about my my own. You know, yes, it is sad, but I have to I have to think about my daughter, and she's not really going to church either. But she knows she knows about the Sabbath and things like that. And I told her this morning, I says, "You tell Andrew that if he doesn't accept Jesus, he's not going to go to heaven." You know, so yes, that's all I can do is pray for them, and that's what I've been doing. I have to keep praying. You know. I ne you never know, because there's a lady in my in my church whose husband had never accepted Jesus up until about 
And she'd been praying him, I think, for him for about 60 years or something because he wouldn't accept Jesus, but he got real, real sick and was on his deathbed. And two months before he died, he 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 uh, um, actually accepted Jesus. And that was a wonderful thing because he, you know, she was really happy and content that he died knowing that he that he had accepted Jesus. And that's what I'm hoping and praying to. I'm just going to keep praying for my grandsons. In fact, I can bow my head. I don't know how, how well I can do, but I'll try right now. Let's just pray. Dear Father in heaven, I pray that you be with the people in this scope, that if someone is in here and hasn't accepted Jesus, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will convict their heart and that they will open up their hearts and minds to you, Lord, that they will accept you to get into their Bible and study for themselves what's about to happen. And I pray, Lord, that you be with Andrew and Jared. They have turned their back on you, Lord. I don't know why, but they have turned to atheism. And I just pray, Lord, that you will, that they will come back to you, that your Holy Spirit will convict their heart too as, as well, Lord, that they will want to be a part of, of, the, of your church, Lord, and they want to follow you. And just keep them and stay with them, Lord, and, and help me to keep stay and love them and keep praying for them, Lord, because I really don't know what the situation, only you do, Lord. You know how it's going to all end with them. And I'm going to keep praying, Lord, and I hope and pray that the Holy Spirit convicts them and they accept you. Now go with me and the rest in this periscope. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, I hope that I hope that helps. I'm not real good at praying, but I, I feel that it's going to, you know, the our prayers that we send up to heaven have some some influence. I know they do because, uh, you know, I've, I've been praying all. Oh, thank you. I've been praying all day and, and um. I just don't know what I've been crying and praying to the Lord and says, Lord, I don't know what's happened to him. And, he, and my daughter asked him because he was texting and saying such bad things. Actually, in essence, the worst thing of that of that um, uh, thing he posted on Facebook, he had F word throughout it. And he never, ever talked like that. And I won't bring the F word up because you all know what it is. But he used that word and I was so disappointed in him. It was terrible, just absolutely terrible. I guess he did delete the post finally. He deleted, he unfollowed me and he deleted his post. He realized he shouldn't have posted that, you know. But he told my daughter, he says, well, I don't want to upset grandma. But he has upset me. And I told her, I said, you should tell him he's upset me. He's hurt me very deeply, you know. Yeah, you know, and the thing of it is, Satan's got him. And, and that's the sad thing. And I told my daughter, I said, Satan's got him. He doesn't realize it, you know. But he knows God exists, but he's decided to be an atheist and not have anything to do with religion anymore. And she asked him why. And he says, Mom, I don't want to talk about it. I really don't, you know, there's nothing to say. So I'm just hoping and praying he opens up to her and tells her, you know. So... Yeah, you. Yeah, we just have to keep. It, it is sad. We have to keep praying for our family members because when I don't want them lost, you know. But there isn't anything I can do if they if they don't come to Jesus. You know, you can a person can pray for years and years and years for somebody before they'll finally come around, and sometimes they never do. But we can't give up, and I'm not going to give up on him. I pr I promised I, the Lord I wouldn't. I promised my daughter I wouldn't. I'm going to keep praying. I so I promised her I wouldn't give up on him. And I'm not going to. I mean, he's a loving grandchild. You know, he's he lives a long ways from me. He lives in Iowa, and I live in Oregon. I don't talk to him, but still, I'm still going to pray for him and keep him in my heart because I don't I don't want him lost. You know, and and that's the saddest part. Of, you know, and the worst part of it is if something tragic would happen to him, you know, tomorrow or any other day, and he hasn't accepted a Jesus, he's really going to be he's he's really going to be lost. And, no, I'm just upset because of my grandchildren. And um, that's the worst part of it. Because he could he could be, um, um, he, he could lose his life. And if he hasn't accepted Jesus, he's lost. And that's the, that's the thing that scares me the most. And that's what I told my daughter. He needs to come to Jesus so bad. And so does Jared. Jared doesn't feel as bad towards me as Andrew does, you know. He's, he, he, he's, he's a little different about it. But, yeah. Brigham Salvation, that's right, you know. And that's like I said, he was in Pathfinders, and they both dearly loved Pathfinders. And I thought maybe after being in Pathfinders that they would that they would uh, stay true, but they, they never did. You know, they, they're at the age of accountability, and my daughter blames herself because she never really went to church much, and they never took, she never took them to church. I said, yes, you should have taken them to church, but it's not her fault if they would go the other way because they've got a mind of their own. You know, who knows, but maybe they would have been in the church for a while and then all of a sudden left it anyway. So many do now as it is. But I'm just going to keep praying for them, you know, and, 
And just remember them in your daily prayers too. Their names are Andrew and Jared. And uh, they're loving boys. And I don't I don't want either one of them lost because it's, it's sad. And um, I think I will call it quits now because it's, it's a little, I've had been heartbreak all day and it's hard for me to even give this periscope. But I'm, I, I'm glad you will. I thank you for that. It's, it's getting a little late here. Oh, thank you so much. I enjoyed having you here. I'm glad you could make, you could come in and, uh, I'm going to call it quits now because it's getting real late here. And it's about time for me to go to, yeah, it's, it's um, about time for me to get some sleep. So I thank you all for coming in, the live viewers as well as the replay viewers. Take care. God bless. And bye-bye.